What I'm going to ask you to do today for the next hour or so is to suspend your belief in conventional wisdom. That experiment has gone sadly wrong. And the experiment I'm referring to is the low-fat, high-carbohydrate experiment that is absolute rubbish. You ask any intelligent person on the street, what is the best diet for heart disease? They'll say, low fat, straight away. And you, you would have all thought that. That is <coughs> rubbish, and I'm going to show you why it's rubbish. And this is what I talk about in my new book. I talk about the difference between high quality food and poor quality food. I talk about the difference between high quality vitamins and poor quality vitamins. If you want optimum health, you've got to change how you think about things. What happens is the surgeons walk in after the operation with these hands, and they go, these hands have cured you. You know the difference between God and a cardiothoracic surgeon? God doesn't think he's a cardiothoracic surgeon. So, <laughs> bypass surgery is a bit of sophisticated plumbing that does absolutely nothing to the underlying process. It's all about prevention. And people aren't thinking prevention. They just wait till they're in their 40s, 50s and 60s and have their heart attack. Note I said 40s, 50s and 60s. It's not a disease of old people. We're seeing too many people dying prematurely from heart disease and cancer, and we've got to start doing something about it. This thing here is called the membrane. It's the covering of every cell. The membranes of your cells in your body, every single cell in your body has this membrane, and these membranes are 75% fat. So you go on a low-fat diet, you are damaging those membranes. Low-fat is ridiculous. It doesn't work. And by the way, look around. People have been following this low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet for the last 25, 30 years, and everyone's getting fatter, and everyone's getting sicker. Every second person you speak to feels tired, and everyone's stressed out of their brains. So the system we've been given ain't working. So it's all this process package garbage that we're putting down our throats every day that's destroying our cell membranes and stopping our cells from getting proper nutrition. Now, I've just explained to you which modern medicine up to this point hasn't been able to explain, the epidemic of diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and cardiovascular disease that we, ha we have in our current society. It's the chronic poisoning to our bodies by synthetic chemicals, which we're exposed to all day, every day, especially the stuff we're now putting in our mouth. But just go outside and breathe. And there are some people, you wouldn't believe this, you're not going to believe this, some people actually put things in their mouth and light it and suck it into their lungs. Let's get rid of this pathetic dependency we have on the medical profession to solve our problems once they've happened. Let's start thinking about prevention. So, what's the solution? Well, it's the five-point solution. Anyone who's heard any of my talks realise that everything is in fives. And there's a good reason for that. You've got five digits on your hand. You have five senses. There are five seasons if you count Frankie Valley. So <laughs> everything is in fives. Number one, we have to know where we are now. Number two, you've got to have a proper nutritional program. Number three, Bruce spoke about it at the start, exercise and movement strategies are so important. Number four, I will mention smoking again a bit later on, but no smoking. And number five is not just stress management, it's improving the mind. It's seeing every day as a self-improvement program. I believe if you're a male over 40 with a heart, which is everyone apart from lawyers, <laughs> um, uh, Tim, are you a lawyer? Oh, I'm sorry, I would have spoken slower. I didn't <laughs> You're sucking the fat out of his arteries. And you can do that if you really want to. But you have to know where you are. You have to know where you are now, not wait till the disease occurs. Two and a half thousand years ago, a guy called Hippocrates, you may have heard of him, the father of medicine, said this, let food be thy medicine. We all eat too much. Western society eats too much. We were all designed to be hunter-gatherers. But the only hunter-gathering we do now is drive our car down to the supermarket, throw all the groceries into the back of the car and drive home. Number one, get rid of synthetic food out of your system. And I'll go through each one of these and what it means. It's a con job, guys. It's a con job that's making the food industry squillions of dollars and creating diseases for people like me to treat. You can do something about it. You've got the same stuff in avocado. And it's more natural. 
You see what I'm saying? You've got to start thinking differently to what you've been told. Why is protein so good for you? Because really we speak about carbohydrates and fat and leave protein out of it. And I think that's a shame because proteins are positively good for you. We have this epidemic in this society now of depression. And we're treating depression with vitamin P and vitamin Z, Prozac and Zoloft. I mean, you know what happens when you give a bunch of Maoris Prozac. You know what you call them? Once we're warriors. <laughs> so instead of having that biscuit or piece of cake for morning tea, have some nuts in the office. And what are the best three nuts? Walnuts, almonds and macadamias. Blueberries has the highest antioxidant content, closely followed by strawberries. Extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil comes from really, really <coughs> ugly olives. <laughs> Slow, but you got it. It's good. Now, there's a few caveats here. Caveat number one is you don't get double the benefit for double the dose. <laughs> Caveat number two, you can't save it all up for Friday night. <laughs> and you see here, my doctor said only one glass of alcohol a day. I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best form of exercise and what should we be doing? Well, it's very simple. The best form of exercise is one that you enjoy and you will continue to do. Most successful people have sedentary jobs. So you've got to try and train yourself, even at work, to get up and move as much as possible. This is the face of a smoker. There is nothing glamorous about smoking. It kills people. Sure, bad things happen to people. No doubt about that whatsoever. But it's how you respond to it that's the most important. People who are regular meditators have 50 to 60% less heart disease and cancer just by the simple act of learning to sit quietly by yourself and going into your own thoughts. Value the other person's position. The world doesn't revolve around you. The world doesn't revolve around me. We're here to serve other people, value their position as well. And then finally, just finally, my last story, and for those of you who've heard me speak before, I've told this story many times, but it's the most pivotal moment of my life came, which teaches, teaches you the capacity to respond to the unexpected, the uninvited and the unimaginable, because sometimes this happens. And this gentleman on the slide now was my best friend in high school, and one week before my final exams at high school he died. What greatness is, is your ability to step outside your suffering, to step outside your situation and touch someone else's life. That's what it's all about. And I promise you, if you start thinking differently about your health and thinking differently about your life, you too can achieve some enormous victories. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your wonderful attention. <laughs>